Hi there, everybody. Um, in order to get us ready for our work in topic five with equations and inequalities, I want you today to complete page 251 in your book, and that page is titled Review What You Know. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and complete the section up here at the top that's labeled vocabulary first. And when you're finished with that, come back and play the video and check your answers. We will do this for each section of the page as you go through. And you should be taking these notes in your book. Um, anything that we do here um, in the video should end up being in your book and part of your notes as well. And uh, hopefully this will get us ready for our first lesson. All right, so pause the video, try the vocabulary, and come back and check your answer. Okay, so check your answers to the vocabulary and see if you have any questions about those terms. If you made any mistakes, go ahead and erase what you had and replace it with the correct word. A statement that contains the symbols less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to is called an inequality. Number two. Properties that state that performing the same operation on both sides of an equation will keep the equation true are called properties of equality. Number three, addition and subtraction have an inverse relationship because they can undo each other. And number four, terms that have the same variable are called like terms. Now what I'd like for you to do is recall what you learned last year with solving one-step equations, and this time I want you to try the properties of equality section numbers 5, 6, and 7. Pause the video while you try those, and then come back and check your answers and your work. All right, as you check your answers to questions 5, 6, and 7, I want you to follow along with me and make sure that you solve the equations using inverse operations. Again, this should have been something that you did last year in your sixth grade math class, but if you are unfamiliar or if you don't remember, this is a good reminder before we get into two-step equations this week. So number five says x plus nine and eight tenths equals 14 and two tenths. So that's this problem right here, okay? And because there is addition, next to the variable x, we are going to solve it by using the inverse operation from addition, which is subtraction. So if I take the same amount from both sides of the equation, and here I use kind of a little balance beam to show that I'm doing the same thing on both sides, I'm going to take away that 9 and 8 tenths from both sides. And when I do that, right here and right here, I keep the equation balanced so that x is equal to whatever 14 and 2 tenths take away 9 and 8 tenths is, which in this case is x equals 4 and 4 tenths. So we solve an addition equation by using the inverse operation, which is subtraction. Now let's move on to number 6. Number 6 says 14x equals 91. Because the 14 and the x are multiplied together, you have to use the inverse operation of multiplication, which is division. So in this case, we are going to divide both sides by 14, as you can see we did here on the left side. And when we divide by 14, 14 divided by 14 gives us 1, so all that's left is 1x. On the right side of that equal sign, we have 91 divided by 14, which when you do that division, you get 6 and 5 tenths, or 6 and a half. Number 7 has a fraction multiplied by the x. And the way that we get rid of the fraction is to multiply by its reciprocal. Remember, multiplication um, with fractions and division with fractions are very closely related to each other, and we actually use the um, process of multiplying by the reciprocal to represent that division. So in other words, because I have one-third in front of the variable x, in order to get rid of that, I have to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of one-third, which in this case is 3 over 1. Or when I do it on the right side, it's just 3. Okay. 
So 3 over 1 times 1 third, in this case, gives us 1 whole. So those cancel each other out. And again, I'm left with just the x. And then on the right side of the equal sign, I've got 24 times 3, which is 72. Okay. So the next part that I'd like for you to take a look at is the part about like terms. Like terms can be combined if they have the same variable. You cannot put terms together unless they have the same variable attached to the number in the front, which is called the coefficient. So on 8, 9, and 10, you are looking for those terms or the pieces of the expressions that are alike, and you're going to put them together. So what I'd like for you to do is take a look at number 8. Let's try this one together so that you can see how it works, and then I'll have you try numbers 9 and 10 on your own. Number 8, of course, is a little bit messy because there are fractions involved, but it doesn't mean that it's any more difficult. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to identify one of the variables in the problem. In this case, we have 1 fourth times k. And what I'm going to do is circle the operation and the terms that have the k in them. 1 fourth k and negative 2 thirds k. And we're going to put those two terms together. But this time we have to get a common denominator before we can do that. So fourths and thirds have a common denominator of 12. So we're going to make 1 fourth k into 3 twelfths k. We multiplied both parts of that 1 fourth fraction by 3 to get that common denominator of 12. In the fraction 2 thirds, we're going to again multiply to get a denominator of 12. But this time, each part of the fraction 2 thirds gets multiplied by 4. So we get 8 twelfths k. Now, when we subtract these two, what you might be wondering is, well, how in the world do I do this? This works just like it did when we had integers. Okay, We're only going to be adding or subtracting the numerators. In this case, 3 minus 8. 3 here, and then we're going to take away the 8 from it. So 3 take away 8 is the same as 3 plus negative 8, which would give me a negative 5k. So that's the first term. Then we also have a second term here because we have another variable. This time the variable has m on it. So what you'll notice here is that I've got a 1 fourth m. Yeah, let me try that again. There we go. Plus a 5 ninths m. So my 1 fourth and 5 ninths also can be combined because they contain the same variable m. But again, we have to get a common denominator. So 4 and 9 have a common denominator of 36. And 1 fourth, to get it to 36 as a denominator, gets multiplied by 9. And on the 5 ninths side, in order to get a denominator of 36, we multiply by 4. So we get 936m plus 2036m equals 29 over 36m. So that's my second term. Now, to put this all back together in order to get your expression that is simplified, I'm going to go back to my black pen here, we would put this together and we would say negative 5 twelfths k plus 2936m. That is our simplified expression. Now, that took up a lot of space because we had fractions that we had to get common denominators for. But as you look at numbers 9 and 10, you'll notice that those two, those two problems do not contain fractions. They only contain integer coefficients. So try 9 and 10 and then come back and check your answers. Okay, so let's take a look at question number 9. You have two terms that have a b attached to them. You have a negative 4b here, the very first term, 
And then the third term is also a negative 4b. So when you add negative 4b plus negative 4b, you get negative 8b. Then the second set of terms that you have both have w's on them. You have 2w plus 8w equals a total of 10w. So putting your expression back together here means put those two terms back. Negative 8b plus 10w is the simplified expression for the one that you were given in question 9. Now take a look at question 10. What you might have noticed in question 10 is that only one set of the terms had a variable on it, the negative 5z and the negative 4z. So a negative 5 take away 4z is a negative 9z. Remember, add the numbers or subtract the numbers that are in front of the variable. And then you also notice here that you had some values, 6 plus 8 and plus 1 in that expression that just were numbers. In other words, there was no variable there. So you know that you can add numbers together. In this case, 6 plus 8 plus 1 makes 15. So your simplified expression is negative 9z plus 15. All right, our last problem here on this page is an inequality. Remember, an inequality tells us about a range of values that will fit, that will fit or fulfill a situation, but does not necessarily contain an equal sign. In other words, most of the time these have that greater than sign, it looks like that, or a less than sign. Sometimes we have greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. So there are four symbols that we use when we try to write an inequality. One of those will help us describe the situation that says a large box of golf balls has more than 12 balls. So that large box, do we know how many are in there? No, that's going to be our variable. Let's call the variable B. So that large box of golf balls, and let's make it a capital B so that it stands more for a large box, has more than 12. Well, to represent more than 12, we need the greater than sign. And greater than 12 tells us that that large box of golf balls has greater than 12 golf balls. Now, if it were an or equal to situation and we had the line underneath that inequality, it would say a large box of golf balls has at least 12 golf balls, or it may say a large box of golf balls has 12 or more. In this case, it says more than 12, so we know that 12 is not a part of our answer. Okay, we're all done here with our review what you know page. I want you to make sure that you go back. If you need to rewind the video and go back to the vocabulary at the top of the page, please do that. Make sure that you have all of the work that I have here in your book on page 251, just like I have it here, because I will be checking this page to make sure that you have your notes. That will be a grade for today's class. If you have any questions, raise your hand and ask for help.